Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Anna Felt. I'm the manager of Empower Women. And uh, we are here, the whole team, very excited to meet you all and um, to show you a little bit about Empower Women and answer your questions. We have received a lot of questions by email. Um, but if we miss to cover any of um, the topics that you have already asked questions about, please remind us. Uh, we'll try to cover as much as possible through um, the few slides that we put together. And um, we hope to um, cover all of your concerns and questions and um, that you've been asking us. So um, I welcome you to this webinar. The 2016-2017 Champions for Change is the kickoff of the rally, um, the next stage of the selection process. Um, so what will we talk about today? We will uh, do some welcome and introductions. Uh, we will go in a little bit into the details on what you will be doing during the rally. And, uh, and then we'll take uh, question and answers. Uh, we will share with you um, the slides afterwards, so we will not cover all of the details in the presentation um, now, but you can read some of the testimonies and some of the text at a later stage um, when you have time. Um, I see that somebody has uh, already questions, um, so thank you very much for that. But for those who are not certain on how to ask a question, um, during the webinar, you can enter them in the question in the pane. You go into the questions and you can type it in there and you can If you have questions in any of those languages, feel free to ask them in those languages and, and we will help uh, to answer them as well in, in your language. Um, so here's the team. It's myself, Anna Felt. Um, we have Cecilia Fernandez, Diana Russo, Emad Karim, and Moral Guzel online as well. Cecilia is based in Ukraine. Diana is here in New York with me. And um, Mad is in Cairo and Meral in Istanbul. And um, these are the uh, people that you will be working with in the next uh, month or three, three and a half weeks for the rally. And for those who get to select it as the champions, we'll continue to work with, with our team. Um, so just give you a little bit of background for those who have already researched the website and, and know it probably by heart by now have already come across this information. But I just want to uh, reiterate that we launched Empower Women in 2013 um, at the high-level segment of the UN General Assembly here in New York. Um, it was um, a big event and very excited ever since um, what we've been doing. And we actually started off as a knowledge um, repository where we um, collected resources and publications and people could register um, and uh, engage in discussions. And over time, it has evolved into a movement for women's economic empowerment, where we are focusing much more on um, learning opportunities, um, engagement opportunities, and uh, the Champion program has also evolved over time to become larger. Um, the first group uh, was very small and it has grown over time. Um, our vision uh, is a world where every woman is able to use her voice, make her own decisions, and engage in economic decisions. Um, our mission we are dedicated to empower, uh, empowering women to achieve their full economic potential by inspiring both women and men to become advocates, change makers, and leaders in the community. And we equip, equip them with resources, opportunities, and a global platform that facilitates networking, learning, and sharing of experiences.
and together with our whole community, that is today we have about 1 million users of Empower Women and we have over 17,000 registered members and um, there are lots of benefits and together we are trying to create ripples of change and we have seen very, very good results and storytelling is a way that we get to hear um, how we are creating that change. So storytelling is part of um, what you will contribute during your rally and during the championship because that's the way that we can show that we are making a difference uh, both as, as the Empower Women team and the champion group and the larger community. And um, that's also how we show what works and what doesn't work. But there are lots of opportunities as you can see on this slide and, and the benefits um, to be engaged with Empower Women. Um, I will not go into details, but you can see that the Champion for Change program is one of the key benefits um, of being engaged on Empower Women. Um, we have a dedicated space, um, Champions for Change space on the platform. If you go to who we are initiatives, you will see Champions for Change. This is the place where we will post engagement opportunities for you, but then we will also feature all the work that you are doing as well as on, on the broader platform. But this is a way uh, our previous champions had asked for a dedicated space so that their work um, get emphasized and, and you can go straight in there and see what has recently been published. Um, so the recent call for applications, we were overwhelmed with a huge interest and we are very excited to have so many of you in the call in this webinar today. Um, and um, we have um, lots of applicants from Africa, but we hope that also we will have um, champions from other regions. It's important for us to have diversity, um, but you can see in, in the past there has been a lot of amazing champions uh, from the African continent. And this is the pictures of some of them. Um, so what will a champion do? Um, what you will be expected is to use your expertise, your skills, and your knowledge that you already have acquired from school, from your workplace, from your community, your family, to help promote women's economic empowerment, both online and offline. In this rally stage, um, it will be mostly online so that we can um, capture the, the work that you do and that we can measure and see who will be selected as the champions. Um, the offline engagement will be for those that have been the selected champions. Um, and we will then be working with you um, both through our champion alumni and also through our team in guiding you to what is possible and, and what, is, um, what you can accomplish in the, in the following months. Um, and you will be able to actively participate and lead online discussions, contribute blog posts, share relevant resources, invite your network to join uh, the movement, and explore innovative tools and solutions for women's economic empowerment. Um, you will also be expected to develop a personal or group project um, to empower women online and in your community. And there's, uh, this project uh, can be small, it can be um, large, uh, but we encourage each of you to think what is uh, doable and, and reasonable during the period of your championship. Um, and many of our previous champions have either worked um, per in individually because they, they were the only um, champion in the country and they wanted to do an offline project or we have um, champions that have been working in groups either online um, to do a campaign or they have been uh, working offline uh, when they're based in the same city or in the same country. So we encourage all of you to also connect once we put the list of the selected champions up on, on the dedicated site that you connect with each other if you're based in the same country or city. Um, and um, the required time commitment is really up to you, but we expect about three to four hours per week for the period of the championship. Um, 
there could be one week that you have less time or a week that you have more time. But on average, uh, we see it about three to four hours per week. Um, the participation is on a voluntary basis, so we have no funding uh, available to cover any of the costs. Um, so please take that into account as well. There are lots of uh, organizations um, at the local level that would be willing to um, host, you, host you in, in their premises. They can lend you a conference room to organize a meeting. There are so many different ways that you can leverage the existing resources in your community that you don't necessarily need any funding to do what, what you would like to do. Um, we don't have to go into the application deadline because it's already passed, um, but I'd like to emphasize that we'll start the rally today um, and uh, with a few days delays, uh, but we will on the 10th of December announce the selected champions. And um, by the 20th of December, we'll work with you in, in um, developing your activity plan and what you are planning to do during your championship. Um, we have not yet decided exact um, uh, number of champions that we will select, um, considering that we had um, almost 5,000 applicants. Um, I think we will do somewhere between 50 and 100 uh, champions. Um, in previous rounds, we have selected 29, 44, 60, and 77. So you can see that the group has expanded over time. Um, but we'd like you to be focused during this three and a half weeks to make sure that you get to be selected um, for the championship. And for those that might feel overwhelmed of the requirements um, for the championship, you can still participate in Empower Women activities um, if you feel like um, at this round um, that you might not have the time or, or anything um, to participate in this round and we, uh, you can apply in, in the future. Um, so we have, in, from the previous rounds, um, a, a group of 250 champions uh, from over 60 countries. It's been an amazing experience for us here at UN Women to work with uh, passionate people from all over the world. And the projects that they've been working on has been building digital media presence, both for themselves but also around the, the issue of women's economic empowerment. They have published articles and stories and they participated in discussions. They mobilized their networks, either from their school, from their workplace, in the community, or um, sometimes much larger than that. Um, and the results we have seen, and I will show some of the testimonies, I will not read through them, but you can look at them later, um, have really been improved confidence. Uh, they've been able to approach leaders in the community with the title of uh, Champions for Change. Um, they have, some of them got better jobs. They've been able to negotiate better salary. We've had um, a few webinars around uh, negotiations and confidence building. Um, some of them got promotions, some of them got accepted into master's programs as a result of having been an effective champion. Um, and of course expanded the networks. We have, um, for example, a Facebook group uh, with the previous champions that they are discussing on a daily basis and sharing their accomplishments and we could do something similar um, for the selected group of champions this time around. <clears throat> Some of them have actually also talked about the policy change that they've been able to create in the workplace and in the community. So this is very exciting. We have uh, at the bottom of this slide um, very exciting statistics, partly, <laughs> um, that 80% in Brazil, uh, a company made some research for us at the global uh, level, 80% of people do believe in gender equality and women's economic empowerment. Um, only 30% of them have done something about it. And this is what we are trying to do with the Champion program to make sure that our champions are out there and talk with people to make sure that more than 30% of people actually take some action uh, for women's economic empowerment. Um, but 80% of them would do something if they just knew how to. And this is also what the Champion Program is about, is, uh, is about 
um, figuring out in your community what is the issue and what it is that you can do and together with your family and networks in your community the difference that you can make for gender equality and women's empowerment. Um, so here are a few slides with the testimonies. I uh, will share it with you. You can read it for yourself. But we had one of the champions from the, U from the US um, has helped her to equip with skills and knowledge to help serve others. And she feels personally more confident and qualified and prepared to do the work that she feels is her calling in life. We have another one from Nepal um, that feels like she upgraded her networking skills and involved herself in online and offline advocacy. Actually, this particular champion, she started um, an NGO um, and a network of rural women in, in Nepal uh, as a result of our championship. Um, you can read this later. This is from Nigeria and Kenya. <coughs> and um, now about the rally. Um, the rally is really for you to show your passion for women's economic empowerment and to learn from each other and actively participate in the activities that we have on Empower Women. Help mobilize friends and colleagues to join us. So there are two places for the rally that um, you should show your um, that you are active. Um, empowerwomen.org is, is the primary place, but also on the social media channels. Um, and this is the place where we can actually see your activism during the rally. So after we have selected the champions, that's also the time to um, engage offline. But we won't be able to capture the offline activities um, with so many candidates. So it will start today and it will go on until we announce the champions on the 10th of December. And we have three, developed three specific groups during the rally. Uh, Morale will be leading the business development group, uh, Diana the skills development group, and Cecilia and Emma the advocacy and social media group. After the webinar, we will share the link to a Google form where you can register to either of these groups. And um, I know that you're all very passionate and excited to get started. I think at this point, if you focus on one group only, uh, it would help you to also manage your time. Um, we would love for you to be um, involved in everything, but uh, think about the time and to make the best and high quality inputs to one group rather than all of them. Um, so Morale, Morale's group, and she will be able to answer any questions later at the Q&A, uh, but just very quickly, um, the business development group will choose a country or the city and town where you live uh, and research names of the different kinds of institutions like women entrepreneurs associations, rural women cooperatives, universities and training institutes that focus on gender or women's studies, private and public sector companies with strong policies and programs on gender equality and women's empowerment. These are the kinds of organizations and institutions that we want to feature in the organizational hub. Uh, we want to make sure that all of the good work that is happening in your country, in your city or town, um, has um, can be showcased at the global stage. The more we show that uh, activities are happening, results are being achieved, the more we can motivate others to do similar things. Um, and once you have registered the, to the group, we will share with you the, the Google form to register after the webinar. But once you have registered, Morale will uh, provide you with uh, further details on how you can submit um, the content and in what format um, she would like to see the submission of these organizations. But more broadly, we'd like the name of the organization, their website, social media handles, and any contact details. And of course, we'd like to know why you have selected them, um, what makes them worthy of being showcased on a global platform, what, what is the kind of work that they do. 
So group number two is the skills development group, which will be led by Diana. And um, we have decided as Empower Women to uh, start focusing on two areas, financial literacy and digital literacy. These are two skill sets that we believe that everybody in the world would need in today's world, uh, in today's job market, as entrepreneur, as student, or whatever um, occupation uh, a person has, financial and digital literacy are critical. So we'd like to get your support in contributing a learning resource. Uh, it could be a video, a game, a manual, a um, training manual, um, or whatever you come across in these areas that you think is really useful. Um, and you can upload them directly to our resource uh, center, um, the resource library. Um, you can also uh, prepare one or two stories that answers the following questions. How basic financial literacy changed someone's life? Could be at the private level, um, or it can be professional. And you can base this story on, on an interview. You can uh, either tell your own story, or you can interview somebody in your community, whether it's a student, entrepreneur, businesswoman, a leader, that m financial literacy made a difference in their lives. And we think that this is very powerful um, to use the storytelling methodology to really show <clears throat> others what is happening out there um, and how critical financial literacy is today. And we see every day that um, it's not that evident. Um, there is a lot of people that don't have the basic idea of finance and how to manage money. And uh, we'd like to help by telling stories um, and to share those stories on social media. Um, another question is, what are the most useful financial products or services for people of different ages and backgrounds? So that could also be something that you can do some research yourself and write the story yourself. Or you can go and interview somebody in a bank or in a financial institution and submit this story. And we encourage you to include data and statistics from your country if possible. And both, of, both the resources and the stories can be uploaded directly to Empower Women. We just ask you to give us some time to review the stories before we publish them. Um, and be ready for some feedback or questions from, from Diana if, if something is not clear. Um, finally, the third group is social media and advocacy. Um, so here we would like to make sure <coughs> that you're active contributor on Facebook and or Twitter on a daily basis by either retweeting, reposting our messages, or posting your own. And we'd like to use more visuals um, on women's economic empowerment topics. So um, Cecilia will... Um, um, provide you with some details on how, if you have visuals or if you are a very creative person who can create visuals, um, you can engage with Cecilia in making sure that we have good visuals for women's economic empowerment on particular topics that are concerning to you in your community, in your country. And that we can share the data and statistics globally on, on the issues that concerns you. Um, what we also have been using is Adobe Spark. It's a very easy tool that you can use from your phone or your uh, computer or tablet to create your own videos. And um, I propose Cecilia to uh, host the session on how to use how to do that. And it's quite simple for those who are interested in in this topic. Um, you can in, uh, include your own data and statistics. You can include your own video clips from your community. Um, and that is another way to show what's happening on the ground in your particular country or village, town, or city. Um, and also to make a little bit of research on women who has made a difference in your country. We have her story campaign. Um, and we are looking for more stories of historical figures or uh, women um, who 
are making a difference right now in your community or country, um, and to help write up that story. What we have seen in history books that mostly men are being featured, and we want to make sure that history is changing, or the history books are changing, by featuring more prominent women in our communities to be picked up in uh, history books and, and other, um, um, other literature that can um, be featured. Um, and Emad um, has more information on the, her story campaign. You can also get it from the website itself. If you go at the very top on empowerwomen.org, you see campaigns and you will see more information about the her story campaign. But it's really to, to make sure that we have more women in history featured. Um, finally, uh, we have received a few questions from you, how to create a profile. And for those who, are, who haven't uh, yet registered, um, it is a requirement to be part of the rally. You go to the very, very top and you register. And you, uh, once you have registered, you can uh, do it either through the form or through Twitter or Facebook. Uh, once you have done it through Facebook or Twitter, uh, you don't need to do it again. Um, if you have, if you're already logged in to your Twitter and Facebook account, it opens it automatically when you try to sign in uh, when you come back um, after your registration. Um, and then uh, we have asked all of you to complete your profiles. In particular, we want to know more about you, where you're from. Um, we encourage you to put a photo, um, any title, any organization, or whatever you're doing, uh, complete as much as you can. Um, and you do that by going, once you're logged in to empowerwomen.org, um, you go to the very top. Diana has uh, show, is showing her profile here. Um, you go to View, Edit Profile at the very top where you see your name, and then um, you can input more information. Let us know if you have um, still concerns, but I think um, if you can follow these instructions, um, once you receive the, the slides, um, I think it will be quite easy for you. So this is the time for you to ask your questions. Um, you can ask questions about Empower Women, you can ask questions about the program itself, the Champions for Change program, or specifically about the rally. Um, and um, Cecilia, Diana, Imad, Miral, and myself are very happy to answer your questions. So we have received a few questions. Uh, one is, what is the difference uh, between being an Empower Women member and <clears throat> being a champion? So anyone can be a member. And hopefully all of you have now registered and um, you are already members. Uh, to be a champion, you need to be uh, an active member. And we don't have the rally um, all the time. We, this is actually the first rally we have in 2016. Um, so it is a, a limited period of time where people are interested, people are passionate, and would like to be um, very active and get support. Um, from Empower Women, we have dedicated webinars that are just for the champions where we discuss different things and where we connect and, and we engage with each other, which is different from the broader community. Um, 
and um, the champions will also carry the title of champions for change for women's economic empowerment, um, which the rest of the community do not. So I hope that answers um, one of the questions. Diana, you had another one? Um, yes. Hello, everyone. Happy to be here. Uh, we have a lot of questions. We are so happy that you are active and uh, you are looking forward to know more information. So a lot of people are asking, if you have an online platform but it's already ongoing, can you use it during the rally or does it have to be your personal account? I think we need to differentiate it, um, social media platforms and empowerment accounts in order to track or to um, kind of see your activities, we cannot go through different accounts, of, let's say your LinkedIn, your Twitter, your Facebook, your any other social media or platform that you are using. This is why we are kindly requesting for you to register on empowerwoman.org. When you are creating the profile, we will be able to monitor and to see all your activities within your profile. So anytime, for example, somebody will like your resource that you contributed, somebody will comment on the story you shared, you will receive a notification. All these activities and all these movements we are able to track. The champions will be selected on the competitor-based um, uh, approach. Um, as much you will be active, as more you will contribute, as more points you will get. Unfortunately, we cannot select all of you to become champions, but we will do our best to have a fair process and to select based on merit meritocracy. Thank you, Diana. There was also a question about um, if you can be connected to the other members of other countries. Um, and yes, for sure, but uh, we will not do during the rally um, you will be uh, competing on an individual basis and then once we select the champions we will do everything in our powers to put you together so that you can also form groups and teams and, and uh, collaborate together. But if you want to connect with them now you are always welcome to go to the designated space for champions and over there you will see the list of previous uh, tenure champions and just uh, you know a little bit of search based on their name and surname and you'll find all of previous champions on our empowerment.org. And a lot of people are asking how they should choose the group and if it's possible to choose more than one group, of course, <laughs> you're always welcome to, to, uh, to choose and to, you know, contribute to all, but as Anna mentioned previously, it's all about your time, your commitment. We understand that you have other personal and professional responsibilities. So um, if you feel that you are able to do, to be engaged and to be actively uh, you know, involved in all three groups, we will be happy to collaborate with all of you. Um, Alberic um, a demandé comment compte vous soutenir nos projets. Um, how are you planning to uh, support our projects? Um, basically, what we will do, um, what we've done in the past, we've been working um, on an individual basis with the different uh, teams uh, from our group and we've been uh, discussing and brainstorming together um, what is possible in the project and um, it really comes down to the details. Um, what is your project about and how we can be supportive and we're always trying our best um, either from our team through the alumni champions and from our partners and, and others um, in the country to help you as much as possible. Um, so I think, Alberic, uh, we can talk about that um, question at a later stage once we know more details about the different projects. Another question is, if we just established a social media presence, will that affect our selection as a champion? 
Um, I think Cecilia and Ahmad will be able to respond a little bit more about this, but um, please do not feel shy if you just establish your uh, your your social media profile just now. It's a great opportunity to have more friends, to connect via Twitter, Facebook, and to engage in 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 the discussion. But please, Cecilia and Yamad, if you want to respond to this question in particular about uh, the social media engagement and the collaboration via social media channels. Hello. Um, hi. hi. And I would be happy to respond. Um, no, don't can feel you sit like, closer um, to the mic. Hello. Yeah, can you sit a little bit closer to the microphone? Yes. Can you hear me now? Much better. Thank you, Cecilia. No problem. So uh, don't feel that social media it's a daunting activity. Um, so if you just created your profile and you're new to this and to social media stuff, um, part of being champion is also learning how to do social media, we will guide you through, um, I personally will be guiding you how to create more engaging posts, um, how to write for social media, and um, so everything, um, you will have a person that will support you along the way if it's something that you would like to explore but have not done in the past. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. Another question is, would the stories be published on empowerment.org? And uh, Katerina, thank you for this question. Yes, all your contributions, uh, uh, either for history campaign um, or for the skills development group, um, all of the stories uh, will be published on empowerment.org. We also have different types of products we are combining them and we are featuring them, for example, via blog, via our iLearn platform, and of course we are showcasing and featuring all of them via social media. Um, every time we are going and present uh, our work at Empowerment at Work, we are making sure to um, feature the stories, to mention the stories based on geographical location and based on the interest of a group we are mentioning. So the stories is not just simply posted, but we carry them with us. We carry your voice all over we are going. We also every time make sure to input the study cases um, within our reports, presentation, talking points, and every way where we feel uh, your story brings additional value. I hope this is a good motivation for you, Ekaterina, and for all of our prospective champions to share beautiful stories from all around the globe. And as a, a question for Meral, if we choose the research name in the country, town, does it have to be in the home country? Meral? Hello, I hope you can understand me because I'm very sick and I, I don't have the sexiest voice. And <laughs> not at all. Sorry, Morale. And, yeah, not at all, not at all, please. And be, can you can think as large as possible, as far away as possible. I would, I would be glad to, to receive all kinds of regions and countries and continents. And the um, sky is the limit, I would say, in that case. Thank you. Yeah, so maybe I can also add, we received a few emails about um, someone who is living in one place right now and will move to another country. Uh, you are global champions, um, so no matter where you are, you can make a difference for women's economic empowerment. Um, so even if you go on vacation, you can make a difference. Um, but um, I think that it's easier to start in an environment where you already know it, um, which is your home country and your hometown, but that is in, in, in no way uh, a requirement, it's up to you. Um, there's another question about where, what to start with, and we feel we don't want to direct you and say in what order you should be doing things, because it's really what you are passionate about and where you think you can make a difference. 
So we have given you some ideas um, on the three different groups that we have on where you could get started. One way is, of course, to register to Empower Women and to create your profile. And then after that, to register to one of the three groups. And an easy way, as Cecilia was saying, is to get um, involved uh, on social media and to make sure that you have social media accounts. Um, I was just speaking with one of our interns here earlier who doesn't have a LinkedIn account, and I said, this is crazy because in the US you don't even get a job if you don't have a LinkedIn account. So there are lots of work to promote yourself, and but also to, to promote um, the issues that we are talking about today, gender equality and women's economic empowerment. Another question is, um, how do you get engaged with uh, Cecilia, Diana, Imad, and, and, and Meral? Um, I, I, if there is uh, an easy way to, to do this, <laughs> you just uh, go to our profile, all empowerment.work, click connect, and, uh, and uh, we, you, we are connected. Um, this is the first way, but obviously on our profile you will find out the email um, and please feel free to, to connect with us and to write directly. If you are sending a general email to empowerment.work um, and the, the email per se is directed to a specific person, let's say a mad, um, don't worry, we will forward somebody from who is responding uh, res to the email, will forward the email and Emad will respond uh, to you directly and this is how you will continue the communication um, uh, just in between you. Um, uh, Emad, we have some questions regarding the history campaign. Um, people ask uh, what type of uh, stories they can be about the, uh, the, the, the women that, you know, uh, they live and they know from school, professional environment, community, or it's necessary to be from the history. Maybe you can give some more details about this? Sure. Thank you, Diana. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ahmed Karim. I'm the regional coordinator of Empower Women um, for Arab States, and I'm also uh, coordinating along with Cecilia the advocacy and communication board. Um, for the Her Story campaign, we have two sections that we are working on. Um, one section is to raise a profile of women leaders and uh, scientists and uh, those women who contributed to um, historical movement or inventions uh, and would be noble enough to be added on uh, Wikipedia. The second part, which is um, a little bit easier and more personal and connected to you, is to find an inspiring uh, women from your community. It could be one, one member of your family, um, a teacher from your school, a leader in the community, um, in the street, someone that you heard about, someone that inspired you in your life and may have changed part of your life or all of your life path. Um, so you can share, like write a story. We have a guidelines for how to write a story um, about them just to feature who they are and how they influenced um, your life. Um, and then uh, you can send us that story and we'll review and try to edit if needing some edit. Um, and translate to other languages if the story is um, big enough to be shared with uh, other regions. But we'll definitely send more information about how to write that story and the guidelines to help you. And that's also a good exercise for you guys to um, kind of be trained and practicing writing uh, stories that could be published on Empower Women and other UN uh, women publications. Um, we're hoping that we'll be also selecting the best stories after the championship and we can consolidate in a, a publication like what we did for the I'm a Woman story. You can also see um, that publication, it's available on Empower Women uh, Library uh, where you can see how we featured some of the champions and the users who contributed really good stories uh, to be within that publication. And we're sure and we're really excited that all of you will have amazing stories because you represent a lot of different places from the globe and we have different experiences and we'll be happy to share that diversity. 
Uh, of course, Cecilia and I will be also always available to ask any more details, questions once you start uh, the rally. Thank you so much, Ahmad. Another uh, common question is, can we possibly take some time to think carefully about which group we want to join, or are we expected to choose immediately after the webinar? Uh, thank you so much for this question, and, and, and this is reflected uh, you know, in several times throughout um, the question box. Um, after the webinar, we will uh, share with all of you, prospective champions, the presentation and the detailed um, information about the discussion we have today, the explanation, uh, and how to connect with uh, the focal point, um, the deadlines to uh, register, when you should start the activity, and what is the deadline. So basically, one will be the cutoff date. So by the 10th of December, we will be able to select and to inform back who are the 2016-2017 champions of change. Of course, you will have several days to think, to analyze, and to make your selection. Um, <clears throat> we will provide all of these details in the follow-up email. <coughs> Okay, <clears throat> there are a few other questions about, I think the questions were early in the webinar and I do think we have covered them already, but just very briefly, what we call the rally is the period in which you are competing to become a champion. Um, it's the period where we will um, measure your contributions and both qualitatively and quantitatively. Um, and it's not an automatic uh, process, as somebody was asking. It is a careful selection on our side. Um, and only those that are the most active with um, lots of contributions with high quality will um, be selected to be a champion. And as I mentioned earlier, it will be about 50 to 100 out of the 5,000 um, applications. Somebody was also um, asking how, um, how you can make a difference for women's economic empowerment um, in your community. And sometimes it's just about doing some research about uh, what are women's rights, for example, what is written in the Constitution. And we have a database where all the legal text from the constitutions of every country in the world is available um, in both English and the local language um, for those who are interested in that. Um, but sometimes it's just about raising awareness about what are women and men's rights in, in the community and to talk about it. Um, we had one champion in Italy. She was a teacher. And um, she took the opportunity through her championship to ask the principal in her school district if she could uh, talk to children about uh, gender equality and what it means for them. Um, she played games with different uh, cards with uh, characters that were out of the traditional characters, uh, a woman firefighter and a man um, uh, cooking at home and taking care of the children or something like that, where they were um, asked to tell stories and they had a lot of fun. They uh, had a competition, a uh, draw to empower women, where the children were asked to uh, make a drawing of what gender equality represent to them. And at the end, um, the whole um, initiative was very successful and they put together a play in the school district for all of the parents at the very end. Um, so this, this was one way from somebody who is a teacher, she saw the entry point as being a teacher to actually work with children. But you have another champion from Atlanta, Georgia, here in the US, who said, we have all these big fancy conferences for women, where women with uh, wealthy women, uh, well off are going to talk about women's issues and there's never a conference for uh, less fortunate women who are, who are not as, as wealthy as, as these 
business women. So she put together, and she was very successful in actually also getting in, for those who don't know, in Atlanta is the headquarters of Coca-Cola. So she had them sponsoring her um, event and paying for the venue and some of the other expenses. And she invited um, uh, women from ethnic minorities in, in her in her hometown. So there are so many different ways that you can do it and it's, we'll, we'll be happy to brainstorm with you um, at a later stage once um, you are selected champions on what exactly the project can be about. Um, and uh, because it, it really depends on who you are, what you're passionate about and where you think you can easily make a difference in your community. Another question we have, and I think this is a very important one at this stage and, and throughout the championship in general, can we or should we use UN Women Empower Women logo in our communications? We do have strict rules about the use of logo. Most, more specific details we will share with you in our follow-up emails and of course when you will become the 2016-2017 champion for women economic empowerment. At this point, at this stage of the rally, please do not use the UN Women or Empower Women logo and if you have any questions regarding the logo use, please feel free to, to, to ask any of us and more specifically Cecilia and Imad. They will be the number one go-to when we speak about use <coughs> of, of logo. But at this point of competition, please refrain from using any logos. Okay, uh, another, sorry? Yeah, sorry, uh, just a quick add-on. Also, um, uh, I'm regarding to the logos that also involves color and patterns that, you know, are related to empower women. So if at any point you will be related to that, um, me and Matt, uh, Matt and I will be the persons to contact with in which colors you can use and what is, you know, um, the patterns that empower women uses. Um, another question is how we can you, how we can contact the UN Women offices uh, on country level, regional level, and to collaborate. At this point um, of uh, of competition, we will not be in contact with country offices and regional offices per se. Um, of course, if there will be some uh, events uh, or some opportunities to participate, we always showcase the opportunities via our events and opportunities page. You are more than welcome when apply and participate, but to work uh, in within the framework of a project as a champion for women economic empowerment, you will do you, this, you'll have this collaboration when you will be selected as a champion. And, um, and then further on down the line we will provide all the details. But at this point we will not have a direct contact with the country offices. Um, <clears throat> also, there was a question about the number of champions by country. Um, we are not going to restrict any um, particular number of champions per country. Uh, it's not that it will be one or two. Um, actually, in the last group, I think we had six or seven from Kenya. Um, so it's all about that they were so active in, in Kenya that we selected all of them. Um, that were active and, and had applied. So um, that is not um, a, any restriction. Um, and we'd like you to collaborate with your um, with, the, with the people from your country and not to be competing with them. Um, if there was another question whether we will provide webinars and training opportunities, yes, we will. Um, we will also, um, we have already talked about a few, um, Cecilia offered to do um, a follow-up with her group on, on how to be effective on social media and um, we talked also about the Adobe Spark video. Um, I think, yeah, we are over time. Uh, let's take a few, because we started a bit late, let's take a few more questions. Um, 
and uh, we have um, some, and we'll, we'll also, if you have suggestions of speakers for webinars that um, you'd like to share with the whole group, uh, feel free to propose them as well. Um, we've had as projects in the past, once you're selected as champions, we've had projects where um, champions have um, actually developed a webinar series in, in a particular language. And if you feel um, that um, more opportunity should be done in your language, um, we can discuss that at a later stage once the champions have been selected. Um, your, your establishment of social media presence has no effect on, on your selection of champion. We uh, have all, re all been uh, new on different social media channels and we know it takes some time to grow a community. Uh, but yes, you uh, would need to have some kind of presence, Facebook or Twitter. Um, somebody was asking about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is more your own professional platform where you're promoting yourself uh, to, for jobs and other job-related opportunities, where you can post some of the um, articles that you will be and stories that you'll be creating, um, but it's not um, um, the, the platform that we are using for advocacy and, and outreach. Uh, a lot of people are asking if they can have copy of the webinar. Yes, the recording will be made available along with the, with the slides. Um, Meral, I think we have one more question for you, uh, and, and, and in general around the framework, if you can give a little bit more details about what type of research, um, you know, participants uh, can do, uh, focusing more on the company, focusing more on the entrepreneurship part of this, if you can provide any details, uh, please, um, please do. Uh, Nella, again, I hope you can hear me well. Uh, as Empower Women, we also want to grow up, I mean, for individual members, but also as for organizational members. Uh, so we need to reach uh, to those organizations. So we just put there a small list, but the list is bigger than that. So we can basically separate those companies. Uh, one part, uh, those are the companies who approach uh, gender equality and women empowerment as part of a business case, for example, microfinance institutions or commercial banks. And, um, and thankfully, I would say, because more, more there is a business case inside, there will be more sustainability and more continuation. So this is one part. The second part would be uh, those or those women's association that came together <clears throat> And they exist in all the countries, basically in two forms. They can be either as entrepreneurship associations. It could be a micro entrepreneur or SME woman businesses. Or in the second case, if you come from a country or if you're interested with a country with more rural activities for women, then it could be rural cooperatives. And just please keep in mind, we are uh, looking for to advance women economic empowerment. There are many more associations uh, all over the world, but we just want to focus on women economic empowerment. And the third one would be <clears throat> either academia or training institutes or uh, BDS, uh, business development service providers, uh, focusing on women and most of them. <clears throat> so, sorry. <coughs> so those would be the companies. And again, as I said, uh, there is no limitation. We want to reach uh, as many countries as possible. And, and the way you would research, I would be preparing one big sheet and, and I will put all the details inside. And it is not a huge big detail either. So the only thing maybe we have to focus, when you begin a country, is to cover that country. So it doesn't matter if you do three countries or the whole region. However, it matters that you finish one country entirely, meaning that if you begin X country and you, if, if you only focus 
on entrepreneurship associations, then you leave it there. And second, you go to another country and you do uh, universities there. So it will be very difficult for us to combine all this information. So for me, it's very important that you be begin in one country, then we can come out and we can say that we have done everything on those countries. So in some countries, uh, it depends on the country's economy. It depends on the country. So for example, as far as I know, in Latin America and in South Asia, the macro, macro entrepreneurship is very important and 80-90% of women there, working women there are micro entrepreneurs. So I can just imagine if you want to cover those regions, you would focus on training institutes and um, entrepreneurship centers and entrepreneurship uh, uh, either commercial banks because they do also have a micro, uh, micro finance section or uh, MFIs, that will be the case. For example, in Turkey, I can say entrepreneurship is very important because microfinance doesn't exist uh, as, as legacy. So that will be the case. Or in, in, in Europe, I can only imagine uh, the advocacy would be much more important and business associations, I mean women at the workplace, uh, leadership uh, programs will be more important. So that would be the case that you would, uh, you would focus. Um, I hope I could answer your question, but, but please uh, let me know if you want me to develop this further. And you can contact me also through any ways, any means, by email or through LinkedIn. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have a few more. Diana will respond to a few, um, and I will take also. Uh, Somebody is asking if um, for the business development group, if they can propose their own organization. Yes, of course if you're doing a lot of work on women's economic empowerment, you can propose your own organization. Um, in terms of the contribution, all of your contributions will be counted. So if you choose to go to uh, one group, and you are, let's say you're doing a business development group, and you're still active on social media, all of your contributions will count. So it's not because you choose one group over, over another that your contribution will not be counted in the other group. Um, so everything will be counted. Diana. Yes, a, a lot of uh, our prospective champions are asking if they need to select uh, uh, to work on the stories of financial literacy or digital literacy. It's really up to you. It depends on your passion and your interest and if you feel you have stories and you have information and you can contribute both, Please, we'll, I'll be happy to work uh, on both ends. But either work, it, it's, it's fine, and, and we will work with whatever you will want to do. Another question is if you uh, need to contribute on English or other languages, okay. As Anna mentioned, and I think it's worth to highlight that Empower Women is in English, Arabic, French, and Spanish. So either of these languages uh, you can use in providing your contribution, information, research, um, social media posts, and so on. We are fluent in all these languages and we'll be happy to work with you. We can even add some languages where we are using the content only for iLearn and this will be the case for the skills development stories. We have stories in Swahili, in Hindi, uh, and, and, and we can uh, kind of have a separate discussion if you want about this and I can give you more details. Another question is, will there be any field trip traveling for meetings as a champion? Please remember, we did not select yet the champions for the field round. We all now are the prospective champions. This is the second phase of a competition. Only when the rally will end the, on the 10th of December, we will announce proudly and happily the next round of the champions. We are grateful for all, all your contribution, on your enthusiasm and your, your eagerness to participate. Um, and and uh, this is the process and we will announce the uh, champions uh, on the 10th of December. As a champion, uh, of course, we will, you will have an opportunity to participate to different country-based events, but we didn't have so far 
traveling only for the champions. We provide the information for different opportunities you, you can apply. And if you succeed to get that scholarship, to get the opportunity to participate, to be invited to an event, yes, Father Ron, you can participate. It's all based on your application and your willingness and your engagement. Okay, uh, Cecilia, there was a question uh, or a few questions around what do we mean with the visual? So can you elaborate a little bit on that? And then I think we should wrap up. We are running through very quickly. There are a lot of questions, but uh, Cecilia? Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. Um, when we refer to visuals, um, well, if you, um, so referring also to the previous question about social media, if you have a creative bone, it doesn't matter if it's like, you know, technological or you just grab a pen and paper and decide to draw, um, when we refer to visuals, it can be a photo, it can be an infographic, it can be something that you drew and it represents something that um, it's surrounded the topic of women's economic empowerment. You can draw a comic. It really it's very, very broad in terms of social media. It's about being creative and using technology at the same time. So it's really up to you of what you want to do. We also encourage videos. If you want to do a social media video clip from two to three minutes um, where you are, are interviewing someone and, you know, creating all that stuff. That's why Adobe Spark, um, it's here and um, the training session that Anna talked about earlier as well. So it's really um, what you bring up and what you're interested on. And uh, I will, I will, I have also some skills in, in this area. So if you're interested, we can, you know, talk about them further and we, I can, you know, um, teach you the skills that I have. But if you have other skills, bring them on and we will, like, um, get them stronger as well. So that's what we refer about visuals and doing social media. Thank you, Cecilia. Um, there was, uh, finally, we, we'd like to cover some few final questions. Um, how can you be active? So during the, the rally period for the next three and a half weeks, um, the way we will measure it is primarily your contributions on empowerwomen.org. And for those who are the most active on empowerwomen.org, will, we will then go in and look at their social media accounts and see, um, and, and to, to use that information to complement um, the uh, contributions on empowerwomen.org. So we will take that as the first step. Um, what is your contributions on empowerwomen.org? And then for the top shortlisted candidates, we will then look at what have you done on social media. So uh, empowerwomen.org first and then social media um, second in terms of how we will measure your contributions during the rally. Um, and how can you be active on, the, on empowerwomen.org? There are, um, you can, as we have talked about, you can contribute stories resources and um, discussions. And discussions, I think, is the uh, quickest and easiest way that you can go in and discuss with other champions and the broader community uh, around different issues that concerns you. You can raise questions. Um, you can ask for opinions about different topics in the discussion forum. Another question, and uh, probably it's 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 a need an answer. It's is Empower Woman part of you and woman? Yes, Empower Woman. This is you and woman movement for women economic empowerment. Um, please refer to about us section on empowerwoman.org for more details. And when it was uh, started as a project, the goal, and so on. But of course, during the meeting with each focal point, if you have, or uh, you know, during the uh, revision of a presentation, um, you'll have an opportunity to 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 have an answer, a more elaborate answer, and I had at the beginning of a presentation. But yes, we are part of you and Newman. And finally, what we will do um, after um, 
this webinar, which will end in um, one minute, um, is to send you the recording so you can listen if there was something you could not hear well, some of you had some audio problems, um, you will be able to listen to it again and see the slides for the details and we will share with you um, the Google form where you will register to which group you would like to um, participate in. And then each of the focal points, Diana, Mural, um, Cecilia and Emad will be in touch with you uh, to follow up on, on the selection of, of the particular groups and the activities of that specific group. Um, I think that we have covered all of the questions um, and all of the issues rather. Um, and we hope that um, we have been able to answer um, your concerns. We have, um, there's uh, hundreds of questions, so we tried our best to group them together and respond to them as much as possible. Um, so with that, um, I wish you all the good luck. And um, in this rally, um, which ends on the 10th of December, um, so this is the time, three and a half weeks, to show how passionate you are about gender equality, uh, women's economic empowerment, and your motivation to become a champion for change. Thank you so much, everyone, and talk to you soon.